And welcome back to Project Independence. I'm Rebecca Miller, along with Otto Loos and Christina Liu, of course, Dan Cox. This is our uh, second hour of Project Independence and You, where we're in our Talk of the Town segments. Um, before we go in, I just want to say, um, Christina, a, a wonderful guest you had on. So much information. I mean, we just really kind of like just got on the top. We didn't even get in, as Otto was saying during break. There were so many other questions and things. But, you know, you could tell that, you know, he has certain topics that he really is important to him and wanted to get out there, too. Um, but for the most part, a lot of great information. And, you know, again, it's like it just comes down to planning, you know, Plan your 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 health throughout your whole life. Get to your doctor. Get the test that that's needed. You know, eat healthy, exercise. Make sure you follow up. If you have a procedure, it's not done. You have to continue with the aftercare, and you know, and it's all about really preventative. You know, continuing to take care of yourself. So down the road, like Otto, you know, who probably prevented something major while turning 60 and even at 85 when you had that procedure you know you had this it was kind of like a minor procedure you know and um and you it did was. fine walking how many days later i mean so a it pays less later <laughs> i mean it's fantastic the way they do it and uh i know people who've had nine ten stents mm -hmm. the guy who was on our show years ago dennis Collins had 18 stents and he had diabetes on top of it. Uh, it's not what your goal is in life, but I think the goal is to learn at a very early age to do certain things that and make this not happen so often. You know, try to watch your weight at an early age, watch your diet, stay active. I've, I've always been active. That doesn't mean that uh, you can't get something. Of course. You know, you know and I think doesn't. like that's, you know, there's so many components and that's really, I mean, my page, you know, Becca was laughing when you were saying taking notes because, you know, I was like writing all kinds of stuff down and, you know, the bottom line is, you know, with this, so many topics we have on this show is all about this preventative kind of care, you know, to get involved in. And listen, I think we all are human and everyone knows like the right. things that you're supposed to do and we all fall, you know, victim to not doing all those things. But I think it is a reminder, like, to as much as you possibly can try and control, you know, before the issue arises to really um, do. Because, you know, with the heart, I think what anyone who is listening will know, there's just so many different components that go into that, you know, so it's really... And and to walk away from that, the fact that, you know, I think we got, you know, he heard it here first with like the advancements um, that are, are going on, you know, like which so that was exciting to, you know, hear, you know, that there obviously we hope people don't have to get to that point. But the fact that there is such incredible technology and now with these 3D printers and doing a 3D mm -hmm. printer, I know. Heart, you know, I mean, absolutely incredible, you know, so it's just um it's we're so fortunate to have a platform like the show where we could have these incredible doctors on who are at the forefront of, you know, really saving people's lives with these things. So, you know, one of the areas that I had here, I mean, we're talking about prevention, but suppose you happen to be involved with some event actually occurring, mm -hmm. uh, like somebody goes down. Uh, is it a cardiac arrest? Is it a heart attack? Is it fainting? Um, and what do you do about these things and how do you determine which is which and how do you know when you should do CPR and shouldn't do CPR or use one of those AED things? Um, that's the other half of this, <laughs> you know, when an event occurs and you happen to be involved with it, um, can you do anything and what could you do? Um, you know, it's another topic. Yeah. I guess maybe nurses could be involved with us on the show. Um, you know, re uh, right. first aid kind of thing. You know. There's a lot of CPR training out there too that people can take. You, c I, because when I, because I'm a yoga teacher, I have to do it every two two years. So um, over COVID, I actually did it online, and a lot of those questions you have are answered. You know when to know. You know you you know the you have to check for breath. You have to do you know whatever whatever you can and then you learn the rhythm and the pattern and what how to direct people around you what to do so yeah 
we actually did go to a class that was run a number of years back now by Joanne Tricarico yeah. uh, about that and the use of the AED and the CPR and all whole bit. Uh, but it, everybody needs a little memory jog every now and then. Of course. Uh, because yeah. you don't use it. You know, if you don't use it, you do lose it. And the uh, hope is not to have to. Right. Use exactly. It, right? The hope is you don't have to use it. You know, but, no, but I mean, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't have to be for you. You could maybe be involved. All of a sudden somebody's down and nobody's there who can do anything. Right. Or maybe the good news. Most of these devices, aside from the actual act of CPR, instructs you what to do. Right. You hear right. the voice. It tells you how to what to do, what to, you know, what's the next step to clear the way, wait. I mean, it's kind of like a guide, but um, everybody should be recertified as often as possible just to because yeah, I mean, look at advancements. Who knows? I right. might have taken something two years ago. But in those two years, there's been some new technology that's been added, you know, um, so. Well, yeah. you know, like the te the smartwatch, right? I seriously did want to ask him what he has on uh, because I've thought about that. I have this. It does certain things. But now you can get, I believe there is a watch on the market that will do blood pressure on an ongoing basis. Um uh, which, it, you know, could be a big deal for somebody who is treated like me for high blood pressure, uh, you know, uh, and I've been treated for a long time. It's under control, but, you know. It's amazing what they do. You know, I recently, in November-ish, I joined Orange Theory. So it's, you know, this gym, it's an hour session, you have like a trainer, but there's a lot of people and they move you around the room on the rower on the treadmill, and then they have sections in the back that's like a weight room, but you wear a heart monitor the whole time. And mm. it's like a watch and you put it on your, you know, your bicep area, and it monitors your heart rate and other things because they have something called a splat so you can see in real time the calories you're burning what your heart rate is and if there's a, a several screens that um that are up on the wall so the trainer can see where everybody is at any given time and the colors indicate you know where the heart rate is so you can kind of keep your eye on things but it's just amazing, you know, the technology and, and, you know, to like, there's no way in the past to have really known all those things in real time. I mean, I'm like, and I set my goals, like I want to burn X amount of calories this hour. So I know what I have to do. So I have a screen, all the equipment, you know, the treadmill, the rowing machine, you can see in real time what your heart rate is, how many calories you burned. If you're in that orange zone, which is like the prime zone you want to be in to, to burn and not be in the red zone and all this stuff. But as you're going, you're just monitoring all these things and, um, and the trainer can see you too. It's up on the screen. And when you're done, you, I get an email. It's in the app. I could see my, the outcome of each workout. Um, it's just very interesting. Yeah, interesting. Uh, <laughs> so, you know. But then you get to senior seniors and they can't really do stuff like that. Probably. <laughs> It's, it's all modified. Yeah. It's, yeah. You can oh, modify, you can go slow walk, you can, I mean, they give all kinds of modifications, you know. Um, okay. It's, uh, you know, you can go on the row machine, and if you're not comfortable on the row machine, they have an elliptical, a bicycle, station stations where you can go. It's really, you have to, you have to listen to your body. Like, there are days where, you know, maybe the row machine isn't great for my knee. So I'll maybe go on the elliptical, which is a little easier. You're not, you know, constantly pushing and bending the knee, you know, going back and forth. So you just got to listen to your to your own body. You know, I, I don't see a lot of um, super seniors there, but there's definitely people there in their 70s. And, you know, they're doing the class, maybe even early 80s, I, you know. They're not they're not running. I mean, I power walk. I don't run on the treadmill. So you just really have to listen to your body and and, um, you know, like know that, you know, maybe I feel like I'm not in my 50s or late 50s, but I definitely know that pounding from running isn't good for my knees. So I do the fast walk. You have to really 
kind of just do the best for you, accept where you are and just kind of, you know, do the best you. Agree. Yeah. Where it's you're at. How many times a week do you do that? Three. Do you? Hmm. I do three because now I'm in a challenge. They have a challenge. But yeah, I do three. Some I did four last week. I was wow. visiting my stepmother in Florida, so I, I went to the places down there. And with this particular place, um, you can go to any anyone, anyone in, the, in the country and not, um, you know, they don't charge you or anything like that. It's just like, I think out of the country, which there are, you'd have to pay. But it's, it's yeah, it works for me. You know, it's working for me. Yeah, and my I think my other friend didn't like it, you know. Has to find, you know, that's like yeah. the goal. You know, like there's everyone, Otto, as you said, has different abilities and and, you know, strengths, we, wh whether it's based on age or something else, you know, so I think it is, you know, kind of just any kind of activity, right, is better than no activity. And I think that that across the board is just something that, you know, our seniors can do, you know, and, and yeah. even start small, you know, no one's saying you need to dive in to do something like so, you know, aggressive, but, you know, the fact that there are these, you know, tools, and he was even talking about, you know, like that it's not fully on the market yet, but a bracelet that will, you know, check your blood pressure, you know, constantly. So like whatever it is, I, th I think there are these great advances in technology. We always talk about how there are some, you know, super amazing perks to technology, you know, and I think it's important to to focus on on that and be kind of hopeful in, in where things are heading and, and just kind of get it under control. You know, <laughs> we all know what we're supposed to do. And I think, you know, it's it's just a good reminder to, you know, put, you know, your brain in check and, and try to adapt these things, you know. Yeah. And Otto, just so you know, on Thursday nights, I go to the Orange Theory in um, Garden City Park. So if you oh, ever want. Yeah, I know where it is. It's right yeah. by uh, uh, Jersey Mike's and uh, the bagel store is right next to it. And the liquor store is right next oh, to it. There you <laughs> go. Is that where King Cullen is? That's yes. where the supermarket. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah I mean, five, five minutes. From I know. And I, I, I mean, normally I go to the ones, the one in Farmingdale by my house, but every Thursday I've been going down there. Um, I like it very much. It's a very, I can it's see a nice you through place. the window then. I, there you go. After the, <laughs> I will wave to you. I'll be at Jersey Marks and Mike's in the liquor store. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and there's a, uh, what's the right name? Uh, smoothie, a place right next oh, to it. Oh, it's like a, next like a to tropical the smoothie. That yeah, actually good location for it. Good stores yeah. there, really. Yeah. Well, there you go. All but right. Otto, I, what I want to dive into, because Otto was not with us uh last show we had which was two weeks ago yes because he traveled to florida you know many uh months ago during covid he kind of gave us the rundown about his genealogy he was doing so fill us in Otto. give us a recap of, of what well i'll tell you it couldn't have been better okay um, that's what we like to hear i spent uh three days with uh my newly discovered first cousin once removed cheryl who's your age rebecca roughly um 29 uh, she, yeah <laughs> no she's in her 30s <laughs> no actually she's born in 1967 so you can go from there with the math um it was it worked out great uh they her entire family went completely out of their way uh Aww. she chauffeured us all around uh, down there in that part of the world uh one the first time, time day we went to dinner with her, her son, and his girlfriend, and us. She kept it small in the groups, all right? Then we went to, and we've got another gathering with uh, her mother uh, and her two sisters and one brother-in-law and Bonnie and I, and that was great. It, was, it felt like we knew each other for years. Aww. And then the final Aww. event was we were with her and her husband uh, for dinner. And, uh, you know, it was great. And she showed me a lot of old pictures that she had. She actually uh, gave me a, a photo of uh, what I learned would have been my father's brother wow. uh, was in World War II. And he won the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star. Uh, and the our army, which is an interesting thing, because we family-wise also had people on the other side, right. uh, several of whom got killed. Uh, so war is not good for anybody. But he no. apparently did what he had to do during this war. So anyhow, the answer to the question is that uh, we established uh, 
quite a nice relationship. Uh, everybody really hit it off well. Uh, it was very comfortable. It wasn't strained. Uh, she went completely out of her way uh, to, to, you know, make it happen. Uh, obviously, she's an organizer. Could be a little genetic there. I was going to say, clearly it <laughs> yeah. runs in the family. Uh, you know, and uh, it was really a, a great experience. And, uh, you know, it was the only connection I've ever had with uh, my grandfather. You know, I never, oh. I didn't know who my grandfather was up until about two or three years ago. Uh, when I connected through with this with Cheryl down in Florida uh, with a DNA match, uh, you know, we had a close match that uh, came up right near the top five, like, you know, uh, so it was really, uh, you know, it was a very, it was something that had been on my brain for years. Yeah. You know, I, I always wanted to know who my grandfather was yeah. and my father didn't know. Uh, yeah. He didn't know. He really didn't. And it didn't seem to bother him as much as it bothered me. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to know. And uh, because I, I think I mentioned this on the show before, I really didn't have a relationship with any of my grandparents when I was growing up because they weren't here. They were in Germany. Uh, and they were alive. Three of them, I knew who they were. Uh, but I really, you know, my mother's father and mother I never met. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> That's the way it is. You don't meet them. So I probably am a little over the top as far as the grandfather goes in this country with my grandchildren. Yeah, uh, but I think that that's because you know knew that you I missed am. it. Uh, You're the best grandma. Will, my gosh, everyone should have Yeah, I mean, they will know when I'm out of here that uh, they knew me. <laughs> for better or for worse, they knew me. I mean, we had a good relationship. We have a good relationship. So uh, answer to the question, it was great. Yeah, but and I just, I love, I mean, I remember, Otto, when you had shared you know on this show you know that you got this match and you know started to you know you were in just in the beginning stages of kind of connecting and i think it's just such an amazing thing to do especially for anyone that's listening you know it, it wasn't you know obviously Otto was very organized in in mapping it out but the fact that you can do this you know and this opened a whole new part of your family to you, you know, which is just so amazing. And I think it shows you're never too old or too young to do something like this. And it's yeah. really just a, such a cool thing. And I don't know if you ever watch a show called Finding Your Roots. It's a, mm -hmm. a genealogy show that I find very interesting. But what they do is uh, beyond the norm. Uh, they have an army working on it and they get documents in different languages and you know, they really find a lot of stuff. But you as a non-person uh, who does that, mm -hmm. but you're a single person. You're not, a, for the most part, we're not professional genealogists. Right. But you can do an awful lot uh, on the internet or, frankly, uh, if you don't have that technology, but you do have a curiosity, there are genealogists mm -hmm. around who do not charge a fortune. I use one in Germany. Uh who actually got me all the original records of uh, my grandfather's birth certificate. Uh, here, I got his uh, draft card, right. uh, you know, all kinds of pictures of the store that he owned, an ice cream parlor in Brooklyn, which I visited. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of different things. Um, you can do that on your own, but you got to be motivated to do it. You know, it's like everything, uh, you know, motivation <laughs> desire like rebecca you talk about going to the orange what's the last name theory yeah like three days a week a lot of people wouldn't have that yeah. kind of motivation all right that's real uh, but once you set your sights on something uh, you know you, you i think in order to get older you need to do that you yeah. need to have purpose uh me i'm so busy i don't have enough time in a day um uh, <laughs> You know, because of all kinds of stupid things that I like to do. Yeah, uh, that's great. But you know, uh, you need you need motivation, and if you're having a problem getting motivated, uh, I'm not too sure what the answer is. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if you can make people do something. Uh, you can only make yourself do it. Right. And on that note, on that note, that's right. We're going to take a really quick break. You're listening to Project Independence and You on Community Talk Radio. We are in Talk of the Town, and we'll be right back. 
WCWP is your home for great music and great conversation. You'll find all that and more on WCWP.org. Listen live on the web, check out the lineup, subscribe to podcasts, and stay up to date on the latest station events. Get in touch with us and let us know if you like what you're hearing. And find out how you can support or get involved at the only community public radio station serving Nassau's North Shore. Plus, sign up to get a free bumper sticker. It's all online at WCWP.org. And welcome back to Project Independence and You, Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. I'm Rebecca Miller, along with Otto Los and, of course, Christina Liu. We're in our Talk of the Town hour. And, um, of course, the first time we're in Talk of the Town, we always wind up talking about our, our guests and we go off and um, really talk about talk to each other about experiences and we're just learning about Otto who went on a journey last week and and met new family members and you know how wonderful to feel connected to a grandfather that you always wanted to feel so um we're just really happy for you that worked out and uh you know I these I did ancestry.com I mean I've got a lot of second and third cousins out there and um, very, very generic names. So like I try to look them up on Facebook to see if I could find someone, but it's just not really yeah. there yet. But I I'm looking forward to see because um, I it, my, my father's side of the family is a little bit of a mystery. Um, so I'd love to, to know a little bit more about that. But, uh, you know, um, a great, a great guest again. And um, Christina, what, what's happening in the town? Well, there is a lot going on in the town, as we know. And I just want to remind people that we're excited. Next week, we have on Supervisor Jennifer DeSena will be joining us, which is really exciting. And she's going to give us a little recap about the state of the town and different programs that and initiatives that are going to be going on in 2023. And then coming up in March, we have on Literacy Nassau which is a really amazing community uh, organization out there um, that focuses on and on, on t teaching people English. And it's just, an inc they're so incredible. And she, we've had her on the show many, many years ago. So I'm excited that they'll be back on. Um, we have, uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension will be on and they're going to be doing deciphering food claims, nutrition labels versus food package claims. Uh, Beck and I had talked about this on the last show because I think that's such an important topic for everyone because um, especially in this world, you know, you walk through the grocery store, you are just inundated with packaging and these great, you know, claims and and low fat and no cow, you know, sugar, all these crazy things. And, and you say, oh, my God, this looks great. And then you look at the back and there's just a whole bunch of words. You don't know what they mean or, yeah. or what these numbers are. So I think it's really important to kind of learn tips and tricks on how to actually decipher these things. So I'm really excited for that. Um, also on March 17th, we have on Councilwoman um, Lurvy will be joining us to give us some updates in her region. So she'll come on during Talk of the Town. And I invited all of the council members to pop on and give us kind of, because there's great stuff going on in all different regions. Oh, so, yeah. So I invited anyone who is, wants to come join us to join us during Talk of the Town. And then March 24th, we have a topic I know Beck is looking forward to. It's we have Penny Stern, who is a doctor and the chief preventative and lifestyle medicine over at Northwell Health Cats Institute for Women's Health. She's coming on to do health and healing for life, an introduction to integrative and lifestyle medicine. Um, which I think Great is topic. certainly a wonderful topic. And we've done a lot of different things with the Cats Institute, which is an amazing resource in the town. Um, and I'm then sorry, on March... Christina, just yes. one second. One of the things that didn't come up today that I wanted to bring up is that uh, women are at least as prone as men to heart disease. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a myth that flies around that because you're a woman, you don't have to worry about all that stuff. Uh, yeah, not true. No, it's not. <laughs> no, women have heart events. 
yeah right. it's a very it's a very um important thing and again that's a big focus for february you know for heart health and it's a, it's a big focus on on women's heart health as well i think um, part of that too and we'll learn more about that too yeah. down the road is women's symptoms are different than they're men they're not so, as obvious right right they're not as obvious right. so yeah. you know just like anyone else please you know get to your doctor get checked yeah. out get proper testing discuss any unusual symptoms that you have um and you know like like Otto you know he he addressed something at the time was minor took care of it and you know therefore had 45 years really give or take you know before you had to have a procedure and the procedure because technology got so advanced in those years right. was I don't want to say a big nothing but you know it wasn't as evasive certainly yeah, as it would have been so yeah Certainly. And Good point, Otto. your body, right, is, is the bottom line, and talk to your doctor. Um, and then March 31st, we have on Greg, Greg Balbera, who is um, from Right at Home Nassau, Suffolk. He's going to discuss aging alone and maintaining your quality of life. So we certainly have quite the mix of topics. I'm really excited um, to, to learn more about these uh, these topics. And, guess, and if you ever miss a show, you could always see it on the WCWP YouTube page or on the Project Independence website. We have all of our shows um, archived and it's just uh, such good information. So please, uh, please check that out. Um, speaking of heart health, we had did, Beck and I kind of did a bunch of little uh, tips and tricks the last show we had, but I just wanted to remind people just some little, we like to do our little mindfulness kind of moments. And certainly what affects the heart is stress. Um, I think we could all agree with that. I think stress does not just affect your heart, but all the different things going on inside your body. Um, so there was just some really wonderful tips that I had in my research found on the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. And I just want to remind people just to go into your weekend kind of trying to do these things. Um, we could do, t so it's turn on your relaxation response. Did you know your body has a relaxation response? Your breathing slows and blood pressure and heart rate decrease. The good news is you are able to trigger that response. Uh, ways to do so often combine breathing deeply and focusing your attention on pleasing thoughts and images. Here are a few just different things you can do. So there's the progressive muscle relaxation. This approach calls for tightening individual muscles in your body, then releasing the tension. Start by tensing and relaxing your toes, then your calves, and up to your face. Do one muscle group at a time. I love this because, you know, we've definitely mentioned this a bunch of times, and it's something that you're able to kind of do sitting down. You could be on your couch. You could be at your desk. You can be at all, you know, so it's something that you actually are able to do and just take some time, you know, for yourself to do that. Um, and that also corresponds to the mind. Yep. So if you're if you're thinking of, you know, if you're stressed out and you're thinking of it, you're affecting the body, but you can also let go of it too. Yeah. Take that absolutely. exhale. Um, meditation. We talk about this a lot on the show, this mindfulness meditation. Um, just go into a quiet location with few distractions as possible, being physically comfortable, either sitting, lying, or walking, focus your attention on a specific word or a set of words, an object, or just on your breathing, having an open attitude and letting distractions, including thoughts come and go without judgment. I think that part is so important. You know, I know I struggle with meditation a lot of times because my brain is constantly racing on a bazillion things. So that's most of the battle is to just let those thoughts kind of, you know, come and go. Um, but it's really important thing to do. I struggle with that because I end up taking a nap sometimes. <laughs> that's okay. Well, you know what? You got relaxed, my friend. So I think that's the goal. I so, get so you know, relaxed that I just can't stop. Well, that's awake. what your body needed a nap. So you listen but to your body. But that's that document that. that yep, uh, that's exactly it. That's right. exactly yeah. what I have. Otto, you uh, might be in a very deep meditation. You may not be sleeping. Yeah. You, you may not know that I'm awake. No, you <laughs> may not know that you're awake. You're I may not know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's good. You're, you know what? It, it's, you're giving it a go. And of course, there's guided imagery. This involves a series of steps that include relaxing and visualizing details of a calm, peaceful setting, such as a garden um, or, you know, something that just brings you a peace. And then there's, of course, our favorite is deep breathing. 
This is something you can do anytime, anywhere. Take in a slow, deep breath. Let your stomach or chest expand and then exhale slowly. Repeat this a few times. Was this included with the newsletter, this document? Uh, I, I, but yes, I think that was actually the main. Yeah, that was the. That's what I put in the email newsletter. Because this is how I think I got it. Yes, yeah, because I, I, you know, I do a lot of different research. Uh, I'm always trying to find something. Well, this is you know. this one's very good. I actually. Yeah, I like you know because they're yeah. tips, and we know I love a good bulleted tip. Um, it's something that you're and you're able to utilize it. You know, these are things, and and this is also what I liked is just finding your way of healthy relaxing. You know, there's no way to no one way to control stress. Obviously, everyone is different for what works for them. Um, of course, I love a good walk outside. That's my go to if I'm really just feeling super overwhelmed. It's like just to do even just a short walk around the block. Um, and you could just do some listen to your favorite song during lunch, stretch after a warm shower, catch a few minutes of the sunrise or sunset. You know, there's so many little things you can do that may really seem trivial to you but in the long run can make um a huge difference so whatever it is and I, I encourage people to just kind of do these things everything i just talked about is not something that involves some kind of crazy equipment or you know you got to buy stuff to 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 enact it it's something that you could actually start doing just you know as soon as this show ends you can get to it and 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 do one of these things so we could all just, it's a little reminder for everyone. I gave out actually, which I didn't get to give you both. I have your gift on my desk, Dan and Otto, but I have Beck has it back there and it's a little heart shaped uh, stress like ball. Um, so instead of giving people chocolate for Valentine's Day, I gave everyone a little stress uh, reliever uh, because I think that that's uh, certainly something Im important to kind of just remember uh, this month february especially so you know i actually use some stress things when watching tv sometimes <laughs> not first so of much all it, but, that, it, that's actually a huge thing to do you know not just obviously for stress purposes but you know just to to move your joints and you know it gives you a better people. grip yeah you know my my grandpa <laughs> my grandpa was the king of a stress ball you know and i Remember, I mean, they eventually would end up, you know, exploding somehow, you know, like the old school stress balls in, in his house. But we were always getting and my dad loves it. So every time, you know, it's Easter or some kind of reason I'm making him a basket, I put that in there because I think it is important, you know, just for, you know, stiffness, obviously stress relief and just getting that, you know, it's if you're, you know, not that mobile to, to really kind of do these things, especially. So. Well, frankly, when you get older, it's harder to open a, a, yeah. a can. Uh, or uh, a, a box of Cheerios, yeah. uh, you know, and you have to kind of maintain a grip. Otherwise, yeah. you got to walk around with scissors all the time. And so you know, true. And, and especially things. in the cold. I mean, I even know we laugh about it in our office, you know, because we'll all, you'll hear people saying, is it really cold in here? Like my hands typing on the computer feel so stiff. I mean, back how often do we hear that, you know, in our yeah our office. So I think especially during like these winter months to get that, you know, movement and for when you're just completely, you know, feeling stiff and stuff. So just a little tidbit and you can get these stress things anywhere. They like are literally sold everywhere and they make all kinds of uh, fun, different, different kinds too. So um, that's my two cents on all of that. Uh, you know, I, I'm very good at preaching it. I have to start practicing it a little <laughs> more, um, but uh, that is neither here nor there. Um, Last week, we had our advisory committee, and we have another one coming up on March 8th at Clinton G. Martin Park. I'm working on trying to get a speaker for that um, as we speak. Um, so, And I just want people to know you can come to these advisory committees. They are both virtual or in person, and it's a great place to know what's going on in the town. You know, you can see who your regional social worker is or your regional nurse or just our staff. And you can meet people in, in the community and kind of share just ideas for, you know, programming that you, you think is, uh, is needed. Or if you want to learn more about a certain topic, you know, this is where we really get a lot of our ideas um, for, for PI stuff. So. And I'd love to just talk a little bit about um, it, one of our project independence advisory committee members who comes um to Clinton Martin Park uh, is now, because she told me that she was also a Tai Chi teacher, will now be teaching Tai Chi for the town in Call oh, yeah? Place on Thursdays. Cool. Yes. Yes. Hey. So Cindy, who is um, 
yeah, she's she's Tai Chi for balance. So it's a little bit different than regular Tai Chi, but it's it's like geared for the senior population and she's wonderful. She's going to be 11, I believe it's 11 a.m. on Thursdays. She might have still some room. Most of the classes are full. Um, but yeah, yeah. So she's a, an advisory member and, and is now oh, going to be teaching Tai Chi. Yeah, You know, and that's just such a, a wonderful thing, you know, because we always say, you know, in North Hempstead, especially our Project Independence members, we have such a plethora of people who are just, you know, experts or have had amazing careers or know so much about something. You know, we, we have that all. And that's my favorite when they become volunteers, you know, or, you know, instructors in this case for Project Independence. You know, look at Barbara Melman, our technology for the terrified guru you know she was at an advisory meeting you know and then she's been on our radio program and and i in recent times too because she's still available for anyone that you know wants a little help with uh zoom assistance and, and even some other little tech questions she's able to to answer you know just last week i think it was i got I received two calls, you know, of people that just wanted to connect with her. And, and I reached out to her. She immediately contacted him and she's incredible. And a huge thank you to her. She's, she's, um, just went to someone's house, uh, you know, recently to, to sit with them and, and go over stuff. So just incredible that we have these, um, amazing PI members who are not just PI members, but, you know, became, become part of our, you know, workforce essentially. So. Look at Otto. I mean, well, I, don't, I don't remember already, you thought I mean, you were just an advisory member. Yeah. I mean, you, you're like pretty much full time with Project yeah. Independence. Well, I, you know what I think happens as you age? Uh, you don't realize what you know. Yeah. Uh, you really don't. You know, you go through. I look back in my life. I mean, I spent 50 years making business calls on other businesses. All right. There's not a business that I haven't called on. I mean, I've called on every kind you can imagine. And I look back and something had to rub off during that time. You know, right. it's not like, you know, you're injecting. It's just a gradual uh, learning that goes on. And you don't realize um, uh, once in a while I'll look back and I say, man, you know, you couldn't. The, where, what I did during my work world and even my personal world, as far as that goes, yeah, absolutely. you can't really you can't teach that. It, it just has to happen by by happening you know yeah. it, you learn it through the process unfortunately some of it um uh, like we talked on our earlier segment about uh, the need to educate younger people about heart health mm -hmm. and skin health and dental care and so on you could preach 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 don't smoke don't get you know don't get obese uh, all of the above and it may not sink in yeah, um, it's hard, right? Until because you listen, get older and you look back right. and you say, what a jerk I was. Yeah. I shouldn't have done that. I know. But unfortunately, you know? that kind of comes with being young, too. You know, you just, yeah, I mean, it's all part of the it's game. It's all part of the circle of yeah, life, you, I think. You, you know, you but I can't imagine. I remember uh, sitting in an office in 1962 and I got a pension statement and it said, uh, you're going to retire in the year 2000. And I remember laughing with everybody. I said, look at this. I'm going to retire in the year 2000. Well, it came pretty damn fast, that year 2000, you know. And, yeah. and But wow. when 1962 was there and I was there, 2000 was like infinity. That was like yeah. it right. happened. <laughs> but it yeah. did. <laughs> All right. On that note, um, we have to take a quick break. You're listening to Project Independence and You, Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We will be right back with Otto and Christina and Dan and Talk of the Town. Take WCWP with you wherever you go with the WCWP app. Listen live 24-7 to all of our streams, all from one app. Plus, call the studios directly from the app and visit our social media. Download the app through the iOS App Store on Apple devices or the Google Play Store on Android by searching WCWP Radio or visit WCWP.org for links. The WCWP app, available now on iOS and Android devices. 
And welcome back to Project Independence and You, Community Talk Radio, 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. I'm Rebecca Miller, along with Otto Loos, Christina Liu, and Dan Cox. We are in our last segment of Talk of the Town. This hour flew by as usual. Our first guest was just, um, just terrific. I know we'll have him back and address some of the other topics that were really kind of powerful to him. And, um, you know, we need to help get things tested in in earlier and in the, in the right way um so make sure you get to your doctor appointments make sure you give them every symptom i love that he was saying you i am your priest like I know, tell me what's great. wrong and <laughs> well you know like really you got to tell them if you don't tell them they don't know you know you can't what are they going to do that you're not telling them and maybe you're you have symptoms that aren't active all the time and it's not you know so make sure you tell your doctor. They're not going anywhere. They're not, you know, posting it. Um, on well, like I've said a hundred times on the show, the option then is go to a veterinarian who deals with people who don't talk all the time. Right. There you, you know. go. Um, yeah, it's just uh, important. But before the break, we were talking about programming and gearing programming, uh, you know, towards what the our people want. Um, so we have a lot of exciting new programs uh, that are coming up in the spring. Um, Fridays at Yes We Can has kind of been revamped. Um, so there's three different portions now. There's a matter of balance class, but uh, there's very limited space there. You know, so there might not be. You can call and find out, uh, you know, about it. But um, but that is starts at 930 and then it is followed by what in the world is going on. And that's a current and world events discussion group. Then it is followed by heart to heart bingo and blood pressure screenings with Kelly Steinman, who is one of our PI nurses, and Gina Etienne, who is one of our social workers. Um, so it's a really jam-packed day. You have to register uh, for each portion um, of it. So uh, please call 311 or 516-869-6311 for more information um, on and that. The one thing with the Friday programs is we used to do mindful coloring. Yes. Um, but what was happening is... Um, People were kind of stopping in to pick up their 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 pen, color pencils and their diagrams and things like that. So um, you could still do that. And if you have any questions about mindful coloring, you know, please call three one one and ask to speak with Gia. Great, absolutely. Um, then we have on March eighth, we have a program called Train Your Brain. Alzheimer's and Dementia Awareness. This is going to be provided by the Long Island Alzheimer's and Dementia Center, Dementia Center, and they are just going to um, give you the warning signs, types of Alzheimer's disease and dementia, services available, and there's going to be some fun brain games um, that are also part of that. So that's March 8th from 1 to 2 p.m. over at Magnolia Gardens. Um, we also have some space available in the program that's back. It was uh, a couple of months ago we had a series, and due to popular demand, we brought it back. It's called This Life of Mine, Sharing and Creating New Memories Through Journaling. It's an eight-session guided journaling group um, where you're able to record you know, the unique details of your life, stories of your life. Um, and it's just a great time to kind of share with people and just recount like the past and the present um, and just different memories. So that is going to be facilitated by Gina, our social worker. It's on Mondays starting March 6th over at the Westbury Public Library. Um, space is limited for this, so you need to register as well for that. But it's another thing on this show we always encourage people to do. Um, and it's, it's really great because each class you're kind of prompted with something that you are able to put together you'll you'll have this wonderful little journal at the end of it so definitely uh, check that out um also which is super exciting to have back we did this many years ago it is the brown bag check on your medications program um do you take one medication or more do you have questions about your medications or wonder why or how you should take them put all of your medis medicine in a brown bag whether it's prescription or non-prescription so throw it all in a bag you will meet with a pharmacist. They'll sit with you one-on-one -on -one and review each medication um, and help answer your medication-related questions. It is our partnership with Saint, um, the, the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences over at St. John's University. Danielle Ezzo and her team come in. There's going to be two different sessions. It's Wednesday, March 22nd from 1 to 3 p.m. That's over at Manhasset Library. 
and Friday, April 28th from 1230 to 230. There it is at the Yes We Can Community Center. Um, so you have to call. They'll schedule you for a little block of time. Uh, but I think it's such an important program. You know, all of us have certainly either been prescribed a bazillion medicines or know someone. Mm -hmm. You know, we uh, talked about this a couple of weeks ago, Beck and I. And I don't know if you remember, remember when John would say he was constantly being prescribed like every other week, some kind of new medicine. And it was just compiling and compiling and, and half time you're not supposed to, if, do I take this? Do I not take this? You know, what is, you know, and there's different interactions. There's so many different things that go into um, medicine and whether it's, you know, some people think if it's non-prescription that, oh, that just gives you a free pass to kind of just take it. But that also can interact with certain things, you know, for example, my mom, you know, has high blood pressure things and she's on medication for that. And she, you know, can't take a decongestant, you know, so a lot of these different things, you know, they say do not, you know, go that route. So when she hasn't been feeling good, it's something that we had to stay away from. Um, but which is great because of how things are now. There are products out there that have, you know, are meant for people with high blood pressure, you know, so they'll have like the Dayquil, NyQuil version of, you know, something like that. So it's just, but these are little things that I, I think are so important to know. And hopefully people are aware of that. Um, but they're, it's really important to, uh, you know, just bring this meet with your pharmacist and, and go over it. So I just think, uh, encourage everyone to certainly do that. I'm really excited. The program, um, is back for that. Um, we also have some space available for the watch your step fall prevention program. This is a five session program on Wednesdays, kicking off on April 12th. It is presented through our Northwell health nurses. Um, and they also will have different speakers come in and just tell you how to decrease your risk of falling, simple exercises, how to get your strength up and your balance, the importance of medications for bone health, community and home safety. This is going to be at Tully Park, which is over in New Hyde Park from one to three. You have to register for this as well. So once again, that number is 311-516-869-6311. Um, to register for that. So just a lot of really exciting kind of programs that have been popular and then, you know, programs that are uh, just kind of continuing, which is, is really wonderful. So, and speaking of heart health, our St. Francis Hospital Outreach Bus will be making its first stop on April 13th over at the Yes We Can Community Center from 10 to 2 p.m. And also in April, of uh, April 14th, it'll be at Clinton G. Martin Park in New Hyde Park. So this is great because you don't need to make an appointment. You just can pop on that van if you are, you know, in the area and get these wonderful screenings and education. And And there are people who have actually been sent to the emergency room after their blood pressure was checked um, and it was very, very high. So important. I love the, the idea that there is no appointment needed um, for that. So Definitely check that out. And then Otto, we had requested having one kind of document that had um, all the different SWAMA programs through the town. So whether it's the STOP program or the e-waste program or shed the meds, it's hard to keep up. Uh, Otto was like, you know, I love all these programs, but I have it's a little hard when you have all these different flyers um, with it. So they listened because they knew the pull that Otto has in Project <laughs> Independence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And communications put together a really great list of um, all the programs. So if you are interested in receiving that, you can certainly give me a call at 311 and I'd be happy to uh, to send that out to you because the next program is January, uh, excuse me, is February 25th and that is for e-waste. And that's over at 802 West Shore Road in Port Washington from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. So that's when you could just bring your e-waste uh, to that, which is certainly is something that we all uh Get. And then March 18th will be our stop program. So you still have plenty of time to gather all the junk and things that need to that you need to get rid of, whether it's documents or just things that have accumulated in your garage um, or your basement or in just your house in general. Right. So uh, I know Otto has his his boxes very uh, well labeled. I like when he puts, you know, his what kind of papers to keep to not keep. Um, so do that. I, Otto, I'm sure you will be attending. Uh, well, I have the shredding box, all right? I used yes. to do my own shredding, and it's uh, a hassle. Yeah. I should add that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is a hassle. Uh, 
because the paper goes all over the place. The thing does gets filled up fast, and then it takes fifteen minutes to clean up all it's the paper rough. that you dropped all over the floor. Yeah, uh, true. So what I do now is I have a box which is just if I think it should be shredded. You know, before I used to have to analyze it. Yeah, so I really I want to mess with the shredder. Uh, now I don't analyze it so much. I just put it in the box that says, well, there's a social security number on here. Yeah. I'm going to shred it uh, and whatever. But the point being now you build up a nice pile of paper mm -hmm. that you bring to the stop program and it gets shredded. And, Absolutely. You know, old tax papers, uh, you know, old stuff you don't yeah need. because you know what i always think too and listen where it's great that we're in a time where things are largely you can kind of have the option for the paperless kind of route you know which is great because paper but it still accumulates so fast yeah. you know i mean i'm kind and i have i choose the paperless option quite often but i still get so much <laughs> paper like and bills and and you know i'm constantly in like this cycle of cleaning out I'm like how does this just accumulate when i just got rid of stuff you know and it's just it, it's really and i like what you're doing Otto, because it's what you have in the box so when these stop programs come around your way you're able to load it up you know and and this way it's ready to go it's not this mad dash of trying to figure out oh my god what can i do you know you're you already know and it's it's takes that hassle you know away and and you know, I think we all can relate to the at-home personal shredder. It's it's great in theory, but it's really something that, you know, burns out quite. Mine always, I either put too much in it and then you'll hear that noise that it's just like, oh God, this is like on its like last leg um, of, of burning out. So it's, um, it's great that you can just bring this to the stop program where they have commercial giant shredding trucks that you're able to, uh, to, to shred your stuff. I, I, I'm going to add that by the way, to that hassle thing. There you go. That's right. Otto yeah. is referring to an article who we've been working on for our upcoming pioneer newsletter with just the, the wisdom of Otto Los. I, we always like to have in the, uh, in the pioneer of just things you can relate to, right? Little tips and tricks. Um, and also, I want to let people know that if you're watching the video, you could see the hard copy of this. Um, the Senior Advocate is a great resource. It is the Spring Summer 2023 edition. Um, I was talking to the woman who creates it, and she's dropped off a whole bunch of boxes that are like boxing me in in my cubicle at work um, because it's such great. You have such a big cubicle; it shouldn't be an issue. Please, you're <laughs> telling me, my friend. But I so I figured, why not add more boxes? Um, so okay. it's great. And if you have, if you're interested in receiving it, you could obviously come pick it up from us. We will be handing it out. All of our social workers and nurses will have it at their centers. But if you'd like me to mail you one, please let me know. And I'd be more than happy to throw it in the mail because it's really a great resource for all kinds of things that are available in the community, whether it's, you know, transportation, veterans, nutrition, uh, housing, there's all different kinds of things in here um so it's, it's a great little tool to use so please call 311 if you are interested in receiving this booklet because it's great if you go to the next advisory committee meeting you probably get one. that is right Otto. you read my <laughs> mind because i that's actually on my list uh, to give out at the next advisory committee meeting so you will you will come you will walk away with a wonderful parting gift um for that also, I want to, I always think this is great for our listeners, whether you're a senior or if you have grandchildren or, or children that might be interested in this. The town is looking for lifeguards for the summer. Um, they really, there's six different aquatic facilities in the town that they are looking to, you know, fill these lifeguards. Lifeguards will have the opportunity to work up to 40 hours per week. Um, and the salary is $18 an hour. So they're really looking for it. You need to be CRP, CRP, CPR or AED and AED certified um, and have a lifeguard certification as well. So they're really looking for this. So it pass the word to if you want, if you want to do it or if your grandchildren, whatever the thing is, um, certainly call 311 to get more information on that. And it's really nice to think about summer. I like saying that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, yeah. I mean, we've been pretty fortunate to have a mild winter, but I'm over it. You know, like I don't even want the thought of, you know, it being winter anymore. I need some spring hopefulness and summer and and the beach. So that's just me. Right. So I'm just I'm do, using my I'm guide, with you. I'm using my guided imagery on uh, what I need in my life right now. And, and that is certainly one of it. Um, 
Also, there is a lot of wonderful sustainability workshops that are going to be kicking off uh, the town's uh, offers such incredible programs and there it's rain barrel and co- um, com- composition, which is we've had on the show before. And it's just um, always is amazing for us to, to learn about these great things to kind of do these eco-friendly initiatives. So the first one is March 1st at 6 30 PM. It's a sustainable yard care. You can find out about composting, using a rain barrel, saving water, creating wildlife habitat, using alternatives to pesticides, applying fertilizer properly and more. And you can just do a lot of wonderful things now um, that are available. So that's March 1st. Call 311-516-869-6311 for any of this information. Well, that's it. I can't believe it. Quick, quick hour. Christina, you know, your birthday is, I think, a little more than 40 days away. So, you know, the countdown start, well, the countdown started (laughs) April 4th last year, but you know what I'm saying. Um, So you're listening to uh, Project Independence and you Community Talk Radio. Thank you, Otto, Christina, Dan, our wonderful guest, um, all the information, Dr. Evan Schwartzwald. If you want any information, how to um, get in touch with him, you can call 311 and certainly ask to speak with Christina or myself, and we will give you that information. Have a wonderful weekend, and we will be back next week with uh, Town Supervisor Jennifer DeSena. Um, Have a great weekend, y'all.